I'm ministering tonight on the power of your words. God wants you to say something positive. Angels will never come until you speak. Did you hear that? Say something positive. Declare. Look at your child who's sick. Go and say, in the name of Jesus, you shall be free. Hallelujah. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. The Bible here says, it is the spirit. Not which, but who. Gives life. It is the spirit who gives life. All right? And then the Bible continues. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit. And they are life. I was wondering if you know about this truth. I know you may be chatting with the people, laughing and conversating. But I wonder if you know that when you speak, any word you speak becomes a spirit. It could be a horrid spirit or an evil spirit. But every conversation, every word you speak becomes a spirit. The Bible says, the words I have spoken are a spirit. Hello? Good. So you hear that? So when you are speaking, wherever you are, be careful because what you say becomes a spirit. And the Bible says, it is the spirit that quickens. To quicken, it is literally to give life. Rejuvenate. To quicken in us something that is dead. To breathe life into it. So the Bible says the spirit does that. But which spirit? What I have spoken becomes a spirit. And it is what I have said that shall give life. Are you there? The word spirit there is the word noma. Noma. Spirit. Noma. Which means the wind. Mm. Are you here, somebody? Somebody say the wind. So Jesus says, when I make a statement, that statement becomes a wind. Not air, but wind. Can, can you imagine you stand in the presence of God the way you are? And you make a statement. The Bible says what you speak becomes what? A spirit. Now that spirit is normal, which means wind. Hello? Invisible. You may not see it, but it becomes a wind, a spirit. Now the Bible says the end. What happens? It says the flesh your body, where you are, if you make a statement. You are in the flesh. It says what you speak. It says it profits nothing. The flesh, God does not look at your flesh. He doesn't look at your flesh. Are, are you following? The word profit is the word opelei. Opelei, which means to add a value. Or to top up. To top up. So the Bible says, when you're in the flesh, the way we are like this. No matter what, you may actually look for something. You may believe God for something. But as long as you're in the flesh, it will add no value. It will add nothing on you. Because in Romans 8 verse 8, the Bible says, for those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Are you hearing me? So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please, please God. How do you know you're in the flesh? Number one, fear. The moment you are scared, the moment there is a situation you're passing through and you are scared of it, no matter how you may call yourself that you're a believer, but you are in the flesh. 
You can be born again, but in the flesh. I have seen so many people, trust me, out of every hundred believers you see in the place, 96 are in the flesh. And only four are in the spirit. So, what does it mean to be in the flesh? To be in the flesh, it is when you, you begin to consider certain things. You consider what? For example, if I tell you now to say, God, God by tomorrow, by tomorrow, uh, this will happen to you. The moment you begin to consider, but how will this happen? Because I don't have money in my account. The fact that you, you have a consideration, you are in the flesh. Because things of the spirit, you do, you, your consideration is God himself. Watch this. Are you, are you here, right? Let me, let me show you something. Do you know there are people now, if I can say tomorrow, tomorrow, if you're going to buy a house, they'll begin to consider, like, how? Because they end the what? The angel came and tell Zacharias that you're going to conceive, your wife will, will be pregnant. He said, how shall this be? For I am awed. Now, why was he doubting? There was a situation to consider. Are you hearing me? There was what? And what was a situation? The old age. Are you following me? The moment you consider something, that how can this happen for? The angel said, I am an angel who stands in God's presence. Because you doubt it, you shall become dumb. Am I talking to somebody right? I want you to hear this. How many people spiritually right now, they are dumb. And they don't even know it. Can I show you something? Okay, let's go to uh, the book of uh, Romans chapter 4 from verse 20. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but it was what? He was strengthened in faith, giving what? Okay, let's, let's continue reading. Being fully convinced. Being fully what? Convinced that he had promised he was able to perform. Who has what? Promised. And when I tell you, when I tell you now, I say, we're going to pray for you now. God will change your life. And do you know we always uh, 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 give such type of prophecies and declarations. But do you know we have got people who will be like, but what he's saying for it to happen, I must have this first. Uh, I must have this first. This must work first. The moment you have a, a condition, you are in the flesh. The Bible says those who are in the flesh cannot please God. No matter how you may pray fast and think you are in the spirit, the moment you have got things you consider, the moment you have got fear, doubt, sometimes you, you, you have got your own way how you think things will happen. You are in the flesh. Now, same chapter of Romans, chapter 4. Okay, we're on verse 20, right? Now, when we go from verse 18, especially 19, now, when we go to verse 18, the Bible says what? Who, contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be, verse 19, and not being weak in faith. He did not consider. Faith does not consider a situation. He did not what? He did not consider. His own body already dead since he was about a hundred years. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. Did you hear that? Oh, yes. He had situations to consider. One, he was almost hundred. He was 99 years of age. Yes. His wife, she was about 94, 95. And can you imagine? He never what? Doubted. He never considered. There was a situation to consider like, so how would this thing be? My wife, she's almost 95. And again, the womb is dead. Uh, I have ever seen my grandmother. She was 89. But trust you me, she was so old. At 89, she was actually walking like that. She wasn't standing straight. She was so old. And <sighs> Now, Sarah... Was 95. And then you don't consider. 
you don't consider that situation. There is somebody right now. There are things happening around you. I'm not considering those issues. By this time next month, you shall have a testimony. Hallelujah. I don't consider the bank loan you have. I don't consider the situation you are passing through. By this time next month, Kora Mandere Boshika. He never considered what? Okay, he says what? He never. But being fully persuaded that he who had promised, he was able to do what? Do you know why? Because he understood when God speaks a word, that word becomes a spirit. It becomes wind. No man. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Hear me. Hear me. Wind, you don't know where it is coming from and you don't know where it is going. Hear me, as long as it was spoken, as long as it was declared by major one, as long as I speak it, as long as you declared it yourself, what we speak, whether we spoke 10 years ago, it is still moving around. It is moving around. It is like a wind. It will quicken. It will give life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It will rejuvenate. Somebody say, I hear you, prophet. So when, when you are talking, all what the enemy is trying to do is to make you make a statement that must work against you because your words produces a spirit. Oh, am I talking to somebody? So the spirit rises on your spirit, which is your word you have spoken. Haven't you noticed? When God wanted the valley of the dry bones to come alive, God said, speak to the wind. Did you hear that? Speak to it. It won't just go over there. So if you are having a situation, a business that is not moving well, speak. Your weights will become what? Spirit and life. No ma, wind. Can you imagine now what the devil does? So he makes, he attacks your business so that you should make a statement that ah, my business is going down. That's what he was looking for. Because what you have just spoken becomes a spiritual law. According to Job 38, verse 33. The Bible says, don't you know that the laws of the heavens can you set their dominion over the earth. Do you know the ordinances in King James Version? What does the Bible say? Let's go to, uh, to NIV as well. It says what in NIV? It says, do you know the laws of the heavens? The laws of the heavens. Can you set up God's dominion over the earth? There are laws of heaven. Hear me. These laws, if you don't apply them, nothing will happen. If you go to physics, there are laws of physics. Meaning to say, according to the laws of physics, it must be in that way. If you put a negative energy plus a positive energy, it must produce power. Those are laws of physics. Am I talking to somebody here? There are laws of heavens. What are the laws of heavens? You speak if you want something to happen. Speak. Jesus said, if you shall say this mountain, to this mountain, be thou removed and shall not doubt in your heart, but that shall believe that the ways you have spoken shall come to pass, you shall have not the mountain moving, but whatsoever you shall say. You shall say. In the spirit, God knows that when you make a statement, it becomes a spirit. So when I look at you, I say, be healed. What happens? My words that have spoken, they go into your body. They become a spirit and remove the sickness. Oh, am I talking about Sabbath, right? So when I say be healed, when I say come out, the words, they're not just a voice. They become what? 
So it means if there's a demon, it means the demon is a spirit. And what I have spoken is a spirit. This time around, it's not my words versus a spirit. It is a spirit versus a spirit. Oh, am I talking to somebody? Right? It is spirit to spirit. Are you, are you hearing me? That's why the Bible says, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Because when you speak from the Holy Ghost, it's not just a spirit that you have spoken. In that spirit that you speak, the difference between people, just normal people and you who are born again, who are spirit filled, is that when they speak, what they say becomes a spirit. You to what you speak, it also becomes what? But the difference is in what? In that spirit of yours that you have spoken, there is life. Oh, are you here? The words I have spoken are spirit and are life. Well, other people who are not born again spirit-filled, if they make a statement, it just becomes a spirit. No life in it. This is why when a preacher is preaching and he's, he's filled with the Holy Ghost, when he is preaching or when he's giving prophecy, you can sense life. Uh, you don't have to worry to know somebody who's, who's, who's spirit-filled or not. It is the life. You can actually sense life. Am I talking to somebody? The words I have spoken are spirit and they are life. The word life there is the word zoe. Meaning, it's not just this life you know. No, it is the God, God kind of life. It is the God's nature of living. So when you speak, it is this life of God which is everlasting. Am I speaking to you? So if you say to your business, you shall not fall. Can you imagine right now, looks like your business is closing. And then you stand and say, my business will not fall. Do you know what just happened? The spirit just came out of your mouth. A wind which has got life. It begins to move around in the circles of businesses. To make sure what you spoke comes to pass. So never doubt it. The moment you doubt it, it comes down. Hear me. If you want what you say become useless, doubt after speaking. That wind comes down and is quenched. That's what the Bible says. Do not quench the spirit. So when you speak a statement, what you speak, you can only add fire. You can only add more. By keeping on confessing the same thing. I am healed in the name of Jesus. I am healed in the name of... No matter what. I am healed in the name of... What you say becomes a spirit full of life. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. Are you hearing me? So the Bible says what? The Bible says what? For the words, the words I have spoken. That word is spoken. It is Rema. Spoken words. It is Rema. The words I have spoken. Come on, sometimes I hear you, prophet. I hear you, prophet. The words I have spoken. Spoken words. Spoken words. If you check the word there in Greek, is Lelaleka. Lelaleka, which means being talkative. Ever heard someone say, you're so talkative. <laughs> now, being talkative in the spirit. Hallelujah. Just moving around in your room. Oh, sharaba, handarakia. Talkative in the spirit. Hallelujah. Coming from the word lalos. Lalos. Talking too much. So Jesus, said, Jesus reached that level. He was, he was talking too much in prayer. Until he got into the life where he said, right now, whatever I speak is a spirit and is a life. Are you hearing me? He was talkative too much in the spirit. So you do. If at any moment, and he went to pray, and he went to pray, and he went. In that prayer, he created a lalos experience. He was so talkative. Did you hear that? Oh, yeah. So be careful with what you say. Tell the neighbor, if you have a neighbor, tell the neighbor, be careful with what you say. 
Your words are windows through which God can come through or the devil can come through. Never make statements like, it's not working. I will die. Hey. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says, wait. I speak. And if you check from the Greek word there, the way the, way the words there is the word remata. Remata. Faith does not consider. The moment you begin to consider your situation, the moment you begin to consider what you are passing through, it's no longer faith. The moment you consider, what about how my husband is behaving? My salary, look at my salary, is too small. How can I be great? If God says you are a millionaire, it goes beyond your salary. Am I talking to somebody right here? It is beyond your salary. How can your salary make you a millionaire? God knows. He has got so many ways. He has one million ways to make his way come to pass. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Do you hear that? Do you know, do not consider anything. Say, speak. Keep on speaking. Keep on speaking. Keep on talking. Keep on talking. Say, lalos. Say, talkative. So you go in your room, you close the door, and you begin talkative. In the name of Jesus. No matter what I'm passing through. In the name of Jesus. Every enemy planning my downfall, I will not fall. In the name of Jesus. I declare I'm not the tail. I am the head. In the name of Jesus. Greater is he who is inside of me than he who is in the world. In the name of Jesus, I overcome every power, every prosperity, every demonic attack. I overcome it. In the name of Jesus, I am victor. Oh, As you speak, Rameta, as you speak, the world becomes a spirit, a whirlwind. Begins to move in the spirit. Can you imagine that? And that wind has got life. Everything it meets along its way, it brings it to life. Everything it the wind meets along its way, it makes it live again. Your business, your marriage, your relationship, whatever you speak, your bones, your blood, everything lives again. Come on, somebody say, I hear you, prophet. I hear you, prophet. Say, no ma. Say the wind of God. Oh, hallelujah. For the wind of God to be there, you have to say it. So you speak the words, becomes the wind. When I say, be healed, what happens at that moment? The ways I have spoken becomes what? The wind. That's how we heal people. Demons don't come out without the spirit, never. And that spirit must have life. The words we speak are spirit and are life. In Matthew 8, verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word. And my servant will be healed. So when Jesus said a word, what happened? A wind was made in the spirit. Do you hear me? There was what? A spiritual wind. It went and hunted the servant wherever the servant was. The devil wait for you and hit you to see what you comment. That's why the devil challenged God. He said, when I touch Job, I want you to see what he will say. All what the devil was looking for was the saying of Job. Do you hear that? The sayings of Job. That's why in Job chapter 6, from verse 24, 25, 26, he said, I remain quiet so I could not make a statement that will contradict against me. So if God said that you are a great woman of God, the enemy will bring so many problems so that you should make a statement that will contradict what God said. Say, not me. Say, Father, forgive me if I made any statement contradicting what you said about me. 
I am what you said I am. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the enemy will bring so many problems. So you should make statements. We're not going to make any statement. We want. Before Jesus rose from the dead, he made sure that he, ra- he, he raised statements. He made his statements. And the statements that Jesus made, he made sure before he died, he made his statements which must resurrect him. Are you hearing me? He said, when I die, I shall resurrect again. And then he died. Those words are ah, you. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Make statements now. Don't wait for sickness to come. Declare that I'm healed. So when disease comes, even before you are sick, you are healed already. And you're believing a life of divine health and you won't even understand why. You are not being sick. It is because you already made what? Statements. Speak. I survive every accident. Before, before the accident. Make that statement like that. Declare that. You make step. Don't wait for the accident to come. Be talkative. And two demons must complain about you. And he says, she's too talkative, this woman. Say this words, Father. Father. You live in me. You, live in me. You, are in me. you are in me. I have you in me. I have you in me. Your spirit is in me. Father from now, help me to be aware that every word I make, every statement I make, it is bound to come to pass. Whether it's positive, whether it's negative. So, oh Lord, help me to keep my tongue. Now, tonight, I use my tongue To create a spiritual wind. To deal with my situation. Clap your hands and begin to make a prayer. Make statements in the spirit.